This is Witchbase News for Friday the 9th of September 2022 ...I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week ...we have the latest news on the location of the interstellar anomaly following a dramatic change in its appearance. Frontier livestream with developer guests and the East India Company offers free commodities for a month to coincide with players transferring from console. If you enjoy our videos please do like and subscribe. Don't forget to click the little bell icon and turn on all notifications to ensure you see all our Elite Dangerous videos and community posts and if you'd like to directly support our work on this channel you'll also find our Patreon linked below. We start this week with news from the East India Company player group. As we've reported a few times before the East India Company has established trading posts that are able to provide commanders with commodities such as meta alloys, modular terminals, Fujin tea and Lavian brandy in exchange for the widely available fleet carrier wonder fuel Tritium. These commodities are needed to unlock some horizons level engineers in Colonia and the bubble and can on occasions be challenging to source. As an extra layer of assistance to commanders that may be about to transfer from the console side of the game to the PC side ...more on that in a moment ...they are offering those commodities free of charge for a month from the 12th of September. To benefit from the free drop all you need to do is mention Operation Consolation when you place your order with them. For more details and to gain access to the East India Company services you'll find a link to their discord in the description below this video. Frontier broadcast their fortnightly frameshift live livestream last night. This weeks episode of the show was hosted by community managers Arthur and Sally and as well as the regular mix of news and community highlights the duo were joined by two members of the Elite Dangerous audio team ...Robin McGovern and Matthew Florians. Elite Soundscape is always a community highlight with good reason and the opportunity to hear more from members of its team in person is never one to be missed. In the interview the team talk about the process of creating audio for our favourite space game, the attention to detail that is placed into objects that you might suspect as having no audio attached to them at all ...starport forest domes for example ...and some of their personal favourite highlights from the game. The team also played some Thargoid noises from Elite Dangerous as they appear in the game but then also played the source noises that were the starting point for those effects before any processing was added to them which was particularly interesting. It's worth noting at this point community manager Arthur was keen to point out on a number of occasions that listening to things in the game that we might not have previously thought of listening to was worth doing. A point that was borne fruit recently when it came to tracking the anomaly that appeared in deep space recently near Barnard's Loop. More on that in a moment. It may be that Arthur was quite rightly merely attempting to highlight cool audio cues in the game that we may simply have not heard or it may genuinely be that pointing your FSS scanner at anything in the game may produce more information than we realised ...worth making note of it in either case. And while we're talking all things Frontier a reminder that as things stand the console account copy option giving console commanders the opportunity to copy an account save over to the PC platform is due to kick in on Monday next week assuming no problems are detected with it between now and then. Either way we'll post on it on this very channel when we know more. Thursday morning this week brought with it some unusual downtime to the game servers and a fairly substantial patch. The patch's arrival was heralded the night before by a post to the official forums from senior community manager Sally Morgan Moore that contained some limited patch notes and an image. The patch note stated simply that an adjustment was being made to lens flares to ensure that they were visible on all quality settings and were visible at the correct ranges. The image which was extremely unusual in and of itself for a set of patch notes was of a Coriolis starport but was named Transmission.png and below it was a string of hexadecimal numbers. The hexadecimal numbers when ran through a widely available web based decoder produced the word coded. 
so there's clearly more to the image than was first apparent. If you open the image in a text editor it produces, as you'd expect, a page of complete gobbledygook. However, at the very bottom of the gobbledygook was a line of binary numbers that very much stood apart. If you ran that binary string through an equally readily available binary decoder it spelt the words ...just because you can't see something doesn't mean it's not real. Cue the sound of thousands of tinfoil hats being very carefully placed on heads. When Thursday morning rolled around multiple commanders who had been tracking the unknown interstellar anomaly or Stargoid as it had become known more colloquially began reporting that they had lost visual contact with it. It could still be heard on the ships FSS and all indications were that it was indeed exactly where it was supposed to be but the mysterious Thargoid swirly thing of doom had disappeared from the sky. As you can imagine the tinfoil grew hotter as the collective community theory generator went into overdrive. Had it cloaked somehow? Had it stopped altogether and was just waiting? Had it, whatever it is, landed maybe? As these and many more wild theories began circulating an eye was simultaneously turned back towards the patch that had arrived that morning and more specifically the patch notes. The notes themselves referred to lens flares and adjusting them so that they were visible from the correct ranges. A couple of days prior to the patch the in-game Galnet news service had referred to the Stargoid anomaly as quote ...unexplained flare detected in deep space unquote. Flare is an unusual choice of words to use for something like an anomaly and it was this choice of words that immediately began to tie the apparent disappearance and the patch notes together. The tinfoil wrapped coupling of those two occurrences of the word was further compounded when commanders took into account the encoded message that was hidden in the patch notes. Again that was just because you can't see something doesn't mean it's not real. The anomaly is referred to as a flare. The patch has corrected the range at which lens flare would be visible. So did we need to be closer to the anomaly now in order to see it? Getting closer to the Stargoid anomaly is no small undertaking. Previous observations of the fast moving mysterious thingy from beyond the stars have shown that whilst it's travelling on a very definite path between systems it's doing so in interstellar space. The space between star systems. Regular viewers to this broadcast will know however that the elite dangerous community is not one to shy away from a serious undertaking and in fairly short order commanders such as Commander Grey Area UK, Commander Mark Xanthius, Commander Garrod and Commander Mosterax to name but four activated their frameshift drives pointing at the direction of the anomaly and headed off into interstellar space. As a result it's now confirmed that once you get close you can indeed pick up the object visually again. A quick look at the web tool created by Canon Research to track the anomaly a link to which you'll find below will tell you that as I speak these words the anomaly is headed towards the Uchors JEC C150 system having left HD 38291. One report sent to us from Commander Grey Area UK recounts leaving the Uchors JEC system in their ship the aptly named Are We There Yet headed towards the anomaly in Supercruise. At the time of reporting they had passed the object at just over 80% of a light year away from Uchors and had now reversed course and were giving chase following it back to the Uchors A star. The object absolutely is still visible. It is still on a trajectory that can be monitored and tracked. It is being chased by multiple commanders. The game is still very much afoot. Given the patch yesterday it does appear at least that the luminosity of the anomaly we've seen in the last couple of weeks may have been unintended behaviour and something that required a fix. It does appear that the object was intended to be seen by commanders but only after a deliberate effort to get closer to it in Supercruise and what we're seeing now and indeed not seeing is what Frontier had intended all along. It seems likely that with the Thursday patch notes Frontier were pointing ever so gently at the object whilst trying very hard not to break our immersion surrounding the ongoing community pursuit of the object and the still unfolding plot around its appearance and presumed eventual arrival. 
I have to say the luminosity bug that surfaced with the anomaly is, in my opinion at least, the most happy of accidents. It injected an extra level of excitement and buzz into the game following the events in HIP 22460 and the firing of the Proteus wave. And now that the anomaly has drawn attention to itself, albeit perhaps less subtly and unintentionally, it's become a larger community effort to monitor, track and report back on the objects journey than perhaps it would have been had it been discovered later into its journey and closer to its eventual destination. Had we not seen it shining so obviously in the distance I'm not 100% convinced that anyone would have detected it visually at all before it, whatever it is, arrived let alone gone to the trouble of chasing it down for hours in supercruise. As I've said the chase is still very much ongoing. I've linked below to Canon's excellent web based tracking solution for the object. You'll also find Canon's recently published paper on the first appearance of the anomaly, the community's tracking of it and theories around its trajectory and behaviour. As things stand the object appears to be headed toward the bubble of human inhabited space. Its true intention and nature are, as yet at least, a complete unknown. This story is still very far from being over. And breaking news, just as we were going to press we are receiving multiple reports that we're attempting to verify saying that as many as 3 more unknown interstellar anomalies may have been detected incoming from other parts of the galaxy. We're attempting to fact check now what is a very new and fast evolving situation but if confirmed this is a dramatic turn of events. What was a curious unusual anomaly may just be the vanguard of an incoming invasion. As soon as we know more we'll bring it to you here on this very channel. Have you detected any more interstellar anomalies? Are you chasing down an anomaly in interstellar space and what do you believe their intentions to be and just where do you think they're heading? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.